Hey there, it's Lenny McGill with Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop here in San Diego today. And um, at the SHOT Show, we saw a bunch of new, exciting products. And some things were related to Glocks and some things were not. So they'll be coming your way soon. But right now, I've got a product that uh, was actually introduced to me by my lead graphic artist. This guy's been with me for a long time, and, and uh, we actually uh, uh, make uh, the uh, case covers uh, with him. And uh, he, he works full time for us, but he also you know makes these uh, for us, and, and he and his wife make them, and we ship them to people all around the place, and they're pretty cool. So he came up with another item that is, is actually pretty neat, and he uh, calls it the uh, Shogun Grips. So let me show you what they look like, and then we're going to go ahead and do the assembly. Here is a Shogun Grip. Now, what's interesting about this particular material is the texture and the fact that we can print just about anything on it allows us to develop a product that I believe is going to be superior to some of our other grips. Now, we do sell, of course, as many of you know, the sandpaper and rubber grips under the Falcon Grip brand. Uh, this is a new item that, uh, and a new material that he found, and, and um, you know, we've tested it out you know, a bunch, and we're going to do another test on video, too. We're going to shoot you know, 500 rounds through uh, a gun and just to see how it holds up. Uh, because that's always a concern of mine is, you know, how does it hold up? Now, so far, it's been doing really well. Uh, but I'm going to make one right now and show you how to install it. And uh, if you see it on our website, uh, you know that we have tested it and it is ready to go into action. So that's what they look like. That's what you get. You get some instructions as well how to put them on. Uh, it's pretty uh, obvious. They are uh, peel and stick, you know, I mean, and it's a super, super heavy uh, adhesive. So the first thing you want to do is, is somehow clean and I'm going to use an alcohol pad, clean the outside of your handgun. Now, it may not look dirty, but if you've been handling it, it's going to have some oils on it from your hands and such. So uh, the objective is to go in there and remove those oils uh, from the frame and slide. Wherever you're going to use the uh, adhesive, as everybody knows, you're going to paint, you're going to stick something, you yeah, need to have a clean surface. So it's not a big process. Just take your alcohol pad or something like that and just rub it down. And I've already done a little bit on this gun, just but uh, I thought I would uh, do it again, just because. And I'm going to do the top as well. And I'm not going to do the barrel right now, because I don't want to move any of that grease out of that area. And then do the entire frame. And then do the front, because that's where your lot of fingers are. And... Basically, you're just cleaning this thing as uh, good as possible. Now, the alcohol is going to dry quickly, and you're going to have a frame and slide that is somewhat grease-free, which is what we're looking to do. We want to get all the grease off it because the grease will prohibit uh, the adhesive from working properly. So, now... There it is. I'm going to let it dry a little bit. And while I do that, let's go ahead and, and uh, talk about this. This one uh, is, you know, made, they're, they're, they're die cut by laser uh, for a particular gun. This is a Glock 43. This is my Beater 43, the one that I've dangled a lot of pieces and parts on over the years. Uh, I've had it for several years. Uh, it, it actually has the original extended slide stop on it. That was the original one we, uh, we built. Uh, and tested, and that's like a prototype right there. Uh, of course, it's got a, an extended magazine release button. And it's got a pyramid trigger, and it's got the uh, uh, HD sights, which are a great uh, sight for this 43. Uh, it's got a 3 amp out connector and all the fun stuff in it. So that said, uh, it's drying up now. Just to run a little paper towel over this thing and make sure it is dry. You can just let it sit there and air dry the uh, alcohol away. What you're going to want to do is just observe where these pieces and parts go. So you'll notice the ejection port. So it's going to go right up top there. Uh, this being the grip right there, and this is a piece that's going to go underneath right about here and wrap underneath a little bit, okay? Same thing on the back side. You've got the slide, the grip, and a piece right there. So that's how they work. Now, this adhesive, like I said, is super, super aggressive. So the way you're supposed to do this, and again, I, I've only done it one time, so I'm going to do it again here, uh, is you want to get the frame wet a little bit. Now, not soaking wet, but damp. So I've got a paper towel. I've got some water here. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and run the water over the frame where I'm going to stick this uh, uh, first piece. 
and I think it's going to be on this side. So I'm going to just now. The reason we're doing that just so that the um, adhesive doesn't set up so quickly on there, and uh, it just will help you uh, adjust the uh, positioning. Okay, so a little bit more, and again, not too wet, but not certainly not dry. So, and I'll do the frame first. Okay, so start with the largest piece. It says, and that's what we're going to do. And here is the largest piece right here. Now I'm choosing uh, the uh, camo pattern because. Uh, this is be a Tennessee gun, so I uh, can't own it legally in California, heaven forbid. And I'm going to come in here and uh, just peel it off. Now you want to be careful. Uh, I'll keep my fingers wet a little bit too, so this doesn't stick to my fingers. Want to be careful as we pull this off and make sure we pull it off in one piece because it is kind of dissected a little bit so that it fits properly onto the frame. Okay, lift that up, and there it is. Okay. All right, and so the backing is done, and I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to line up around the magazine release button, and that's it right there. So there's the magazine release button, and I'm just going to worry about the bottom part first. And you'll see that it's actually going to be really close to the bottom, which is where I want it to be. And then here, and we want to be careful not to be on top of the magazine release button, but just up to it, because we don't want to impede it whatsoever. Okay. And there we go. And looks like that's working. And I want to take it right on the top of the slide. And I want this to be down here. Okay. That goes there. Again, we want to be careful not to intersect the slide at all. Okay. So this goes here. And then I'm going to come around to the top here. And I'm going to just peel these around and uh, give it a little bit of water. Just a little damp. And just push it around. All the way around. And being careful again not to intersect any of the pieces that are going to be moving. Okay, so there it is. It's basically, it's on. Okay. All right. So that's basically step one. And it looks pretty cool. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the slide. Okay. And I see I could have brought it down a little bit. I, I am a little crooked, I gotta be honest. Um, you know, it's not perfect. I could have brought it down just a little bit. And uh, I may see if I can come back out, but it looks like it's on. So uh, I, uh, it's, not, it's, it's okay, it's not great. I, I could have done a little better job there and bringing it down here at this uh, part. That's just uh, operator error there. Magazine button still works, that's good. So let's go ahead and do the slide real quick. Uh, Let's just slide up a little bit, just so I can adjust it. Now, I didn't see that until it was too late. I think you could adjust it before if you're paying attention. <clears throat> I got distracted somehow. And here comes the slide part. And this guy, again, we're very concerned about the ejection port. It looks good. Okay. There you go. Looking good so far now. Okay. One piece here now. And what's really neat about this material, it's kind of spongy. 
so what, what I mean by that is it kind of has a nice you know feel to it. it. It actually feels tacky. So I think it's going to provide a better grip. Plus, you have all these different colors. So that's kind of a neat concept. All right, here we go. So far, so good. Like I said, so here's step one. Let's have a look at that. That's kind of neat, huh? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and do the back side. Again, take my little bit of wetness. Just to be able to adjust it if I have to. I'm going to take the big, big side here. I'm going to try to line this up so that the... Um, The bottom of the frame marries up to the bottom of this piece, and that's going to be my my benchmark. So here's and here's the the um, magazine button too. So I'm going to marry that up perfectly. Okay, looks like that's working. It's sticking to my fingers, but that's good. I'll pull this down just a little bit. Well, there's, there's one and the last piece here. Okay, that bends under, and these guys go around. Okay, so now let me push it down, make sure I get all my air out of there, and I can, because there's a little bit of water in there, I can slide it down just a little bit to fill any of the gaps. Okay. All right, almost done now. So there's the one piece right there. And then finally, I'll do the slide, which is a big piece. And then we'll do the last one to be done. So it's a pretty easy procedure, as you can see. I just uh, Figured I'd show it to you on video because um, it was a little confusing to me when I first looked at it. So, well, how do you how do you really go about it? And he showed me, and I learned, and so okay, I, and now it's pretty easy. You got it once you see it. Okay, there we go. And last piece coming up. Okay. All right. So this will be. Pretty quick, pretty easy. You can do it yourself at home. Uh, we got a lot of patterns, a bunch of different options. You'll see uh, some of them fly by on the screen here as I finish this last piece. And let's see here. There we go. All right. All right, so the serial number is still available. And there is the Shogun graphic for your Glock. Pretty cool. Now, it looks cool, right? Okay, then that's, you know, I mean, I'm always into that, right? You know, how, how's it look? It's a cool, yeah, it's cool. Okay, that's cool. That said, now, how does it feel? Well, it feels pretty good. It has a nice tackiness to it. And that's one of the things that really got me. Okay, so it's not like a sandpaper grip and it's not like the rubber it's a different feel um and once i felt it i thought well this thing really has some legs to it because it does feel good 
and it does eliminate some of the slipperiness of a Glock. So that said, hey, that's our Shogun. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of patterns. He's a creative guy. He's gonna make them, and we make them for all the different Glocks. So you can, you know, Glock 43s, Glock 17, Glock 19s, you know, Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5. It just goes on and on. So there's a big list. And um, you can look on our website if you're inclined to do so and check out the new Shogun Grips here from the Glock store. I'm Lenny McGill. Thanks for watching. If you're ever in San Diego and soon to be Nashville, drop in the retail store. You'll be blown away. It's a really cool store. We do a lot of different things there that other people don't do. We do install pieces and parts absolutely free. So if you buy a set of sights from us, we install them for free. If you buy a trigger, we install for free. If you buy a connector, we install for free. Just, just ask. We'd love to help you out. Make sure your Glock is safe. And make sure it is better to shoot. And make sure you are a better shooter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.